All right. Uh, if you guys heard that, that's our guest today, Ike Larson. Uh, he's a man of many talents. He's got a lot of things going on. Uh, start off by just telling us a little about your family life. Uh, so I got one brother. He's older. He's about 26, but he's married. Um, he lives in Texas now. And then my mom and dad, I think they're like 50-something, but they're good people. Um, <laughs> Yeah, they, they love can, me they a can lot. They be old and good people. Yeah, right? they, they can be old and good people. They love me a lot. They care, so they just want what's best for me. They're good people. So that's awesome. And I probably should have prefaced Ike Larson, uh, safety at Utah State. Yep. Uh, you are freshman All American, right? Yeah, something like that. It was something like yeah, that. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> that's super cool, though. Uh, I got to play with him when I was there as well. So one of my good buddies. Uh, been trying to get him on for a while. It's hard when he's up in Logan, so we're excited to have him on. Yep. Um, you're. So your parents, you have a pretty good relationship with your parents, I'm assuming, if you're, you said your brother's 27? Mm -hmm. so he's like 26, a I think. 26, a decent amount older than you. Yep. So were you pretty, uh, were you pretty tight with your parents growing up? I'd say I'm pretty tight with my parents. I mean, I'm kind of, I like to stay to myself most of the time, but like if I need something, I know I can always go to them for, you know, whatever I need, so. That's sweet. And uh, you grew up, so did you grow up in Logan the whole time? Yep. So... Grew up in Logan, and then tell me about the high schools you went to, because I know you, you had to transition there at some time. Yeah, so I went to Logan High for three years, and then just some things weren't working out the way I wanted them to, so I decided to transfer to Skyview, and, like, all my friends went to Skyview anyway. Like, I'd go out to Smithfield every single day to yeah. stay out with my friends, so uh, I transferred to Skyview the end of my junior year, but that was COVID, so we really didn't go to school, so. Oh, yeah. But it was a it was a fun senior year out there with my buddies, so it was fun. <clears throat> So did you only play one football season at Skyview? Yep, only one. Okay. Uh, when did you get – what was your recruiting process like? Honestly, like, it was kind of different for me. So my sophomore year, um, I committed to Utah State. So, you know, it kind of slowed down the recruiting process. Like, I didn't have as many schools hitting me up, like, right. giving me offers. But, like, I had a lot of schools, like, texting me, like, if you decommit, like, we'll give you an offer because, you know, yeah. I'm sure they didn't want to waste an offer on me. So for sure, it wasn't too bad. Like, and I didn't really send my film out to to the coaches like me and Gary Anderson. Um, we were really close and like I would go to all the camps when I was younger. So he's the one that offered me. So, um, yeah, it was it was nothing like I didn't really send my film out. Yeah. So, so did you know Gary be when he was there the first time? Uh, Yeah. Just when I was super little. Yeah. Just going to camps like. Okay. And my dad knew him just because, like, my dad has a blind company, <clears throat> and uh, my dad hung his blinds in his house, so that was, like, kind of a connection there, but... Oh, that's cool. So. So, um, but it was his... So, was it his staff that offered you as well, mm -hmm. your yep. sophomore year? Yep. Uh, did you... So, was it always your plan to, like, stay home? Is that why you committed to Utah State, or was, like, was that your dream school? Like, tell me about that. Uh, I think I just... I kind of jumped the gun. I think I was just so excited to get my first, like, D1 offer, yeah. especially from Utah State. I mean, yeah. I, I'm from Logan. But, I mean, I, w I don't regret it. Like, it's it's nice being the hometown hero, For I guess sure. you could say. So, But, I mean, everything works out how it's supposed to. So, Right. And tell me a little about that hometown hero. I know, like, mm -hmm. obviously growing up, in Lo like, Logan's not a big <laughs> place. Yeah, if, not, you, if you've been to Logan, you know, right? Yeah. you got that main street that goes right down the middle of it. Uh -huh. But, um uh, how is it playing, like, in the city you grew up in? It's super fun. I mean, I got support, like, wherever I go. I can go out, you know, to Walmart, just walking around, and, like, people are like, oh, I, hey, good, good season last year. So it, it's cool having a lot of support, but it's also cool, like, having that support in high school, too. Like, it, like yeah. nothing has really changed. Like, people still treat me the same. Like, so it's cool. I've always had that support, and it's been it's been fun. I'm glad I stayed home, so. Yeah. yeah. What's been uh, your favorite part about being at Utah State so far? Favorite part, my parents. I mean, they've came to every game, but, like, so they don't have to, like, yeah. travel far. It's good for them just to, you know, drive 10 minutes down the street. Right. The stadium already, so. Yeah, for sure. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Makes it easy on the family. Yeah, way easy. In, in high school, you played uh, both – you played uh, receiver and safety, right? Yeah, well, receiver and corner for the most part. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, my junior year, I got kind of traded to safety or switched to safety just a little bit, just because one of our safeties was injured. So I really didn't grow up playing safety. I played a, I played corner. A yeah. Lot, so yeah. Which one? If you could choose, which one would you play? Shoot, now I'm definitely sticking with safety. I don't, yeah. Yeah. It's it's better. I think. It's an adjustment, but I I agree. Once you yeah. get used to safety, I think safety is pretty fun. Yeah. A little more freedom. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you played a couple sports in high school. What did you play? So I uh I ran track. 
Um, I played basketball. I I was about to play soccer, but then I just at the last second I decided not to. But so mostly track and basketball and football. Do you like basketball or football more? Me and my brother were talking about this last night. He's like, if you if you were equally good in both, which one would you go D one? And I was like, I don't know. It's kind of tough. I would I would go uh, D one in basketball for sure. Really? I, yeah, I like basketball more. Well, that's cool. Yeah. I uh, I was more of a football guy because I like the. You just can't compare like a a, a game a day. Oh, a, a game hit day. too. But yeah, like game yeah. day, like there's just I don't know. The hype on that is just yeah. crazy for me. I love that. Yeah, I feel that. Um. And then, so, like, what are some of your, your, your hobbies outside of football? Uh, seems, like, seems like your Instagram, you always got a lot going on. So yeah. So, you got to <laughs> share something <laughs> with us here. Yeah, I got a lot going on. So, uh, my favorite thing to do is probably just make music, like, write lyrics. Like, when I'm bored, I'll just, like, think of something and just write it down. And then if I get time, I go to the studio, record it, and, you know, go from there. Uh, I like to do that. Uh, I like to be outdoors. I have a razor. Well, I guess I used to. I used to ride my razor everywhere. I'm sure you used to see me riding. Yeah, you pull up to practice yeah, in the yeah, razor. Exactly. So, but I'd say those are my top two things, and then probably just chilling with my family. Yeah, and hanging out with my dog. I got a little dog. His name's Aggie. So, what kind of dog is it? Uh, he's like I think he's a black golden doodle, but I don't even know if that's a thing. He's just black. So, <laughs> I. Did. Yeah, no, I think there's black golden doodles. Like I, oh, a black doodle. Aussie doodle actually. Aussie doodle. Yeah. There you go. I think he's an Aussie doodle. That's awesome. He's a good dog. My best friend, probably, so. How long you had him? Uh, Two years. Yeah? Yeah, I brought him home without my parents knowing. Oh, really? Yeah. They just, ended up loving him, so. It is it, you out. just find him on KSL, or, or what? Well, my friend gave him to me for free, so I was like. <laughs> I was free like, dog. Hey, a free dog. I was like, I'm not going to turn this down. And, like, but before, um, like, three months prior, uh, my other dog died, so, like. Oh, yeah. My mom was still, like. In that phase of where, like, she misses our old dog. Had, hadn't gotten over the old dog see, yet. Exactly. So, but as soon as I brought him home, like, she was like, you know, she said some a few words. And then she was like, well, I guess we can keep him. And then she fell in love. So, That's awesome. it worked out. But How big is he? Uh, I say probably, like, two feet, maybe. Yeah, how heavy? Like, like, is he a little, he's bigger than my dog? Yeah, way bigger. Oh, okay, he's like, he's like, I'd say he's like 40 pounds, probably. Oh, okay, gotcha. So, he's, a, he's a decent sized dog. Yeah. Um. And we kind of briefed over your music thing. Mm -hmm. uh, tell a little about that. How did you get into making music? So one of my buddies, when I went to Logan, uh, he made music a lot. So, and like, I wasn't really into it at the start, but I figured it, I figured out it's like kind of a way for me to talk about my feelings. Yeah. And like, but not causing like any damage. You like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, no, for sure. It's a way for me to get my feelings out. And like, I enjoy doing it. So, as soon as I, like, felt that, I just, like, kept like I kept going with it. And it's been successful for me. Like, I got I only got three songs out right now, but, like, it's been good. The songs that I get out, like, people have people uh, gave positive feedback, so. For sure. But I'd say that's why I started music, just to, like, it's a way for me to, like, cope almost. Yeah. So. For sure. Uh, you get them on, you, you throw your stuff on Spotify and Apple Music? Yeah, Spotify, Apple Music, SoundCloud, but. Yeah, main one Spotify and Apple Music. So if someone wants to listen to your music, how do they find it? Just look up Ike Larson. Or That's if you have, is. like, Alexa, you can yeah. say, like, Alexa, play Ike Larson, and she'll play, like, my music. So. And you, you say you are you got three songs out right now. Mm -hmm. Your favorite one's the Switch one, the one we were playing at the beginning? Yeah, it's hard between Switch and DDM, but I don't know. I like Switch just because it's with my buddies. Yeah. That, like, we started making music, like, two, three years ago. I started doing it with them. And, like, the jump that we made from, like, then to now, like, if you would hear a song from back then, you'd be like, this is trash. But, like, now, <laughs> like, now we've figured out, like, how to how to use our stuff. Like, yeah, that it's, it's pretty cool to see that jump. But then DDM kind of talks about, like, my life, like, in general right now. Like, people, like, with the season I had last year, you know, like, yeah. I was pretty successful and, like, I'm blessed for that. But it's, like, you got to be careful because there's a lot of fake people. That. And what does DDM Are, stand for again? Don't deserve me. Don't deserve me. Uh -huh. So it's like a lot of a lot of people will try to come back into your life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So here it is, right here. Not bad. This was the first one you released, isn't it? No, this it is my was last the, one. Uh, my first one was on my mind. I remember that. I yeah. remember that. So, do you have any plans to release any more music anytime soon? 
I do. I'm actually working on making a country song right now. Oh, there we go. We're going to see how it turns out. But uh, now that, you know, football has died down a little bit, I'll have some more time to make some make some music and then release some more music. So you're uh, you're a decently country, dude, I'd say. Right. I, I'd i say I'm pretty country. I don't know. You, you get around. You wear cowboy boots. That's yeah. like half the battle, right? I ride. I ride horses, wear cowboy. I got a belt buckle. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I say I'm pretty cowboy. Yeah, you're a cowboy for sure then. <laughs> <laughs> what's your, uh, back to the music thing, what's your favorite artist to listen to? That's a tough one. I say, I don't, I don't rap like him in at all, but probably NBA Youngboy. Yeah. Yeah. He, like, is he, uh, is he like a driving around type? music you're listening to or is that like a pregame type music you're listening to that's like every day every day i'll, I'll wake up and listen to nba young boy that's like, awesome oh i don't know people say i wake up mad but it's like i just like him <laughs> <laughs> and he's pretty intense yeah, he? yeah, yeah yeah that's yeah. good he gets after it uh-huh. uh do you have music you listen to so like i guess the reason i'm asking is because if you're someone usually i correlate like someone who makes music that's right. kind of the way they like like, like you said, express emotion, really? so it's how they feel emotions yeah, and stuff. So, yeah. like, do you have certain things you listen to, like, before games and all that? Uh, I say I listen to Youngboy and, like, the baby, But, I mean, I it's weird. Like, I can't be really, like, locked in before a game. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I like to goof off. You know me. Like, yeah, I'm, for sure. I'm a chill guy. And, like, if I'm too locked in, like, I'll play bad. So, it's like you start overthinking it. Yeah, exactly. So, I just really... Whatever song comes on, like SpongeBob, SpongeBob can come on my playlist. Like, like Moana could come on. Like yeah. whatever song like <laughs> whatever. comes on, like I'll vibe with it. So I like that. I think that helps. So, mm-hmm. uh, what are some things that help you play so relaxed? Because I mean, you look relaxed when you play. Like you yeah. look confident, and that's I mean, that's obviously mm-hmm. huge. Yeah. What are some things? I just say my confidence, like. I don't know. Probably just my confidence. Like, people, like, could get it confused with cocky, but, like, it's, like, being in that position, like, I'm not scared. Like, yeah. it's, it's like I'm almost used to, like, being in a position like that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so I just, really, I just rely on my confidence and just my ability to, like, play and react to the ball most For sure. of the time. So. That's dope. So, a lot of people struggle with that confidence. Yeah. Uh, and I think it comes easier to some people, mm-hmm. but what is, like... What would you say to people who have a hard time with that confidence? People that have a hard, I I just say believe in yourself. Like that's that's what it comes down to. If you just believe in yourself and like know you can get the job done, like you'll be just fine. Like and like yes, you're gonna mess up. Like I've messed up a hundred thousand times, but as long as you don't let that ruin your game and like you know get in your head, <clears throat> I think if it's just the next play mentality, like just have the confidence, like have some swagger to it. Like go out yeah. there saying. If you lining up against a receiver, like, I'm going to beat you, like, nine times out of ten, or I'm going to beat you ten times out of ten. And right. If you beat me, I'm going to come back and beat you the next time. So it's just really confidence. Like, just have confidence and don't be scared. Yeah. No, I think that's huge because, well, one, if you aren't confident, like, your level of play is just going to decrease yeah. like crazy. Like, yeah. you can't play well if you aren't confident. Mm-hmm. Um, but, two, the biggest thing I've seen in people and, and at times in myself, too, is, like, if you're worried about making the mistake – you're, you're setting yourself up for failure, yep, right? Exactly. Like you said, right. you can't really worry about that. Like, the reality of it is everybody's going to mess up during yep. the, the span of a game. Mm-hmm. No one's playing a perfect game. And it's like, dude, if you're worried about, like, you know, getting scored on or yeah. or not filling your hole, whatever it is, it's mm-hmm. like you just you can't play thinking that way because yeah. it's slow you down. Exactly. Uh, what's your favorite part about, uh, like, just college football? Like, do you have a favorite memory? Yeah, I, got, I do got a favorite memory. So probably – my f- the first game against UConn last year, I had like the game like ceiling pick, yeah, with like four minutes left I think, so that was pretty cool. And like I didn't play a lot that game either. Like mm-hmm. I played like eleven snaps maybe. I had like three tackles probably, and then that pick at the end of the game. So I think that's what kind of like sealed the deal for me, and like saying like okay I could really like I could like play at this level like I could do this yeah. For real. So but that's probably my favorite memory like so far. How many picks did you have last year? I had four. You had four? Yep. Two of them were in the uh, Hawaii game, weren't they? Yep. I had a pick six in the Hawaii game, and then just a pick in the Hawaii game as well. So. And then UConn, and then what other one? UConn, and then Alabama. Oh, you had a pick at Alabama? Yep, I did. Alabama game. How was that? How was that game for you? 
that game you was got fun. In. You got in. Yeah, I that that game was super fun. I got I think I got freshman of the week that game. Yeah, I think but you did. That game was super fun. Like people are like, "Oh, you're going to Alabama? Like it's gonna be, you know what I'm saying?" But it's yeah. like when I got there, I was like, "I'm right in my element." Like a hundred thousand yeah. people in the stands. Like I'm like, this is where I belong. So that's cool. It, it was fun. Was it uh, a wild place to play, or was it pretty? Was it not too bad? I feel like since that was like only my second game. Like, I was really just kind of, like, not locked in, but, like, but I guess it's just when I play usual, like, I just, like, block out, like, all the noise. So, like, when I'm on the field, I don't really, like, recognize, like, anything else. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just, like, me and the players. Like, and then when I go off to the bench, like, I look around, I'm like, dang, like, this is a yeah. lot of people. <laughs> like, it's crazy, but, yeah. Was that, uh, was that, what stadium was that in that you guys played that game? Their their stadium, their home stadium. Oh, their home I don't stadium. know what it's called, though. Is it the indoor one? No, it was outdoor. It was outdoor? But it's practically indoor. Like, the dome, like, came up. Like, there was only, like, a little crack at the top. Like, so. Yeah. But it was it was crazy. They had lights going everywhere. People were loud, so. It was a, it was a real deal. Yeah, the field was so nice, too. Like, was it? So nice. Grass, right? Uh-huh. That's yep. nice. Yeah. You take it. Are you a grass or turf guy? If I could play on that grass, I'd be a grass guy. But, yeah. like, <laughs> for here, I'm, a, I'm definitely a turf guy. Yeah, that's sure. the problem, right? Uh-huh. It's like. Grass, if it's nice, but exactly. you know, you're rolling dice sometimes with uh-huh. the, the grass. Yep. So what's your favorite part uh, about, like, being in the team? Like, being right. with the team and just, like, the boys? Because I think that's an element that people don't take into account a lot of. Like, you think of football, but I don't think a lot of people realize how much time you spend with the team. Yeah. Like, it's sure. <laughs> a lot of time, a lot whether, of time. Whether you like it or not. Yeah. I think probably my favorite part is, like, we may not all get along, like, the whole time, but, like, if we ever need anything or, like, if one of us is in trouble, for instance, like, I'll tell you an example. So, this last, like, a few months ago, Jet was actually there. Uh, McKay Hellstead, a uh, freshman um, from Sky Ridge, I think, he got stuck in the canyon in the snow. Yeah. So, he called me because everybody calls Ike when they're stuck, you know, because I'm a country <laughs> boy. But he, he, he calls me and, like, we go up in the mountains and we're we're there for, like – eight hours like trying to get him unstuck yeah. so like i think it's just the fact where like we can all call each other like whenever we need anything and like we'll be there so that's pretty cool it's having like a tight brotherhood there so that's way awesome mm-hmm. oh what was he stuck? did he not have a truck or what no he was in like a jeep like like a jeep cherokee oh he, he had so a lot that, way too much trust in that cherokee didn't he so i'm saying like i looked at him <laughs> i was like bro what are you doing like, my dad came up, too, and he was like, bro, this is a street princess. Like, you don't take this up in the mountains. That's funny. And it, yeah, we were up there for, like, yeah, like eight hours. That's crazy. You got him out, though. Yeah, finally. You almost had to wait for that snow to melt. Right. Uh, it, was, it was bad. It was bad. That's hilarious. Do you have a favorite place you've played? Like, a uh, football game? Yeah, like a, a favorite. Uh, yeah. Uh, probably the Hawaii game. That yeah. game. That was probably my favorite place to play just because, like, pretty much my whole family went. Like, all, like, all my cousins, my mom and dad, my brother, his wife. And that was probably one of my favorite games, actually, because that pick six that I got, like. Yeah. They were, like, right there when I ran it back and, like, I was pointing at them. So, it was was, was pretty cool. And it was fun having, like, my whole family there in Hawaii, so. That's so dope. Mm -hmm. What's it like um, playing Hawaii? Like, I mean. The actual, like, traveling and how right. long are you guys there for? Do you get to experience the beach? It's it's different. We left, I think, two days, maybe, prior, two or three days, Yeah, I think. And, like, the first day, we, like, kind of got some freedom. But then after that, like, it's just, like, a normal, like, game schedule. Like, mm-hmm. the next day we have practice, walkthroughs, and then the next day, like, it's game day. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I wouldn't say we had too much freedom. And, like, it was kind of weird because, like, you go back, I think, three or four hours so like the plane ride was like terrible like yeah it makes me not want to go back to hawaii again that's for sure yeah it's a brutal (laughs) it's a brutal flight for sure especially that flight after the game like we got home at like 6 a.m the next day did you go out of salt lake or out of the logan airport No, we went we had to go to salt lake yeah okay or like ogden i think actually but okay because they have that airport in ogden but yeah that trip was it was a tough trip for sure did they at least give you guys a bigger plane than the one we usually go on? Yeah, we got a big plane. Okay. It had, like, the three rows, so okay, yeah, you know, yeah. I was able to stretch my feet out Dude, a little bit. But they pack us in that thing. I know. You yeah. get a post-game, you get in there, and everybody's just hot, sweaty, and oh. Yeah. yeah that was brutal. Yeah. 
Um, what about Leeds? Like, do you have a Leeds favorite place to play? Wyoming. Wyoming. Yeah, I just I just don't like it out there. There's there's nothing out there. <laughs> like the stadium, it was just a weird vibe, honestly. Yeah. Like when I was warming up too, like I was just like I don't I don't like this place at all. That's funny. But I'd say that's my least favorite place to play. Yeah, I don't think Wyoming is a very uh, pleasurable place to go for nah. for most people. So that would make a lot of sense. I never, yeah. I actually never went there. Every time we were there, we played them at home. Really? I guess we were gonna go there, and our game got canceled the COVID year or something. But mm. it's cold too. Cold. Did was your guys' game cold it, or was it during the while well, it was still warm? It was pretty cold, but it wasn't like terrible. That's good. Like because it can get bad, mm-hmm. bad there. Yeah, it wasn't too bad, but it was still cold. That's funny. Who do you look up to? Who are some people in your that are pretty uh, uh, big in your life? Impactful. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah, uh, I'd say I look up to my like my parents, my mom and dad a lot, just because yeah. they've taught me like what hard work is. Like, I don't want to say like stuff is coming easy to me now because of them, but like they had to like really work for their stuff. So like me seeing them like work and now like it's all paying off. Like I want to be able to, you know, give back. If I can make it, you know what I mean? So for sure, those are probably my role models for sure. So that's way cool. Mm-hmm. And what about uh, football wise? Do you have any like who's your favorite player? Uh, he's retired, but Cam Chancellor. I, I mm-hmm. always try to play like Cam. Like he's got uh, two tattoos. Uh, it's like Bam Bam. So yeah. like, whenever he hits somebody, I watched an interview. He said like whenever like he hits somebody, like he's like stamping them with yeah. his with his that, that's with his cool. tattoo. So like ever since then, like I'm just been like. I want to be like Cam Chancellor and like be able to like come down and hit people, but also be able to, you know, guard and get some picks. So that dude's a menace. Mm-hmm. He's a unit. Yeah, he's huge, and the way he moves, it's crazy. He's like six four, like two twenty probably. Yeah, or more. He can move and like, just flies around. Uh huh. I'd hate to have to go against him. Yeah, that's crazy. So what? Uh, what are some of your goals for this upcoming year? <clears throat> uh, so of course I want to, you know, make All American. Yeah. Um, I was second team uh, Mountain West uh, last year, which didn't really make sense because they said I was a number one rated DB in the Mountain West. Right. So, But I still made second team, which is fine. Like, I'm not going to, you know, bad mouth it, but I want to be first team uh, Mountain West next year. And then probably my goal, my goal, like, personal, I want to uh, get eight picks instead of four. So yeah. I want to double it. And then probably, like, 50-plus tackles. I had, like, 36 last year, so. Yeah. But I also awesome. didn't play, like, like I played, but if I would have played the full season, I feel like I would have been, you know, kind of where my goals are right now. Yeah. Instead of where they're at, so. What was your, um, so were, were you uh, first team All-American, or what What was your, you were something All-American last yeah, year? Yeah, I can't, I was like, it was like freshman All-American something. I know it was me, the kid from uh, uh, Boise, the quarterback. Yeah. He was a freshman, too. So I think it was just, like, he won it, but I was, like, the next person that was going to win it or something. Gotcha. So I'm not really sure what it was. I just saw that it was freshman All-American stuff getting posted. So I'm like, see, I think it's C, the college football thing. Yeah, yeah. So. There's, like, a bunch of different Mm -hmm. things out there that send out different awards. Yeah. (laughs) You can never keep track of them. Yeah, Utah State was tagging me in a few stuff, and I was just like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll repost it. I don't know yeah. what it is, but I'll repost it. So That's funny. But, uh, and I'm assuming your goal is to go play in the NFL? Yeah, if if the opportunity, like, presents itself. Like, that's not – I mean, it is a goal for sure, but, like, you right. got to be real with yourself, too, at the same time. Like, the chances of, like, going to the NFL are, like, pretty slim. So, I mean, if I make it, I make it. If I don't, like, I'm not going to be mad. I'm just going to do what I can do. You know what I'm saying? Like, to yeah. get to that point if I get an opportunity, so. For sure. What are you studying right now? Uh, I'm doing, uh, I think I'm doing integrated science and then uh, business probably. Can't remember. Yeah. I'm just going, bro. Yeah, they take care of it all for you. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me. I, I just, Trust me. <laughs> I just go to the classes. I, you get the I schedule every exactly. semester. Yep. Uh, what do you want to do with football or whenever football is done? So... That's why I'm not too worried about, like, school and, like, football if I don't make it. My dad yeah. owns, like, two businesses. So the blind business that I mentioned earlier, he owns, a, he owns like, a blind company. And, like, yeah. he's pretty successful with that. And then uh, 
he he also has a detail company. So oh cool. I'll, I'll work for him like whenever I kind of feel like it, and like it's good money too. Like yeah, if I actually like really did work for him like over the summer, I could make a couple grand, but like. I don't need to do that right now. So. Right. Trying to focus on what you're doing. Mm-hmm. That's my backup plan. If, you know, football doesn't work out, I just work for my dad. And then like, it could be a long time, like a lifetime thing, too, because like he he like he doesn't have much employees because he likes to do stuff is like himself. Yeah. And, like make sure it's like perfect. Like if you ever met my dad, like he's like he wants everything to be perfect. So like, yeah, I feel like if I work for him, like he could like place the orders and I'll just go out. Hang the blinds, easy trip, and you know, be done. Yeah. Okay, so, that's that's my backup plan. That'd be super cool. Mm-hmm. So, would you say you're closer with your mom or your dad? <laughs> it's a tough one. Yeah, that's a, it. It depends. It depends what I'm talking to him about. Like, if I'm talking to him about girl situations, then probably my dad. Yeah. But if I'm talking <laughs> just like life situations, probably my mom. But it really just depends. Like, yeah. I just get a feel for, like, if they're angry about it, okay, I'm going to go to the other yeah. one. If not, then. You're pretty tight with both of them, though. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Um, how has it been? We talked a little about, like, you know, <coughs> being from Logan and all that. Uh-huh. I see you've had a couple, like, NIL yeah. opportunities. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have one with, like, Wilson Motors, right? Yep. How is that? What are the, What is that like? Uh, it's it's good. They're, they're definitely treating me right. Yeah. Um, it's really it's it's simple. Like Nate Wilson, they're a great guy. He just he he wants to take care of the players at Utah State. That mm-hmm. and especially like I'm from Logan, like he definitely wants to take care of me. So really, just I help him out with like social media and whatever events that they have going on, and then I'm able to drive a car that they supply for me. So yeah, that's sweet. It's pretty cool. Do you have any other? Uh, I would imagine a lot of the Logan, like the local places, are trying right. to get you, right? Yeah, I got, I got a few. So I just got one with Taco Time, and Logan too, actually. So that that's gonna be a good one. I'm gonna do a commercial. Uh, Justin Bean did a commercial with them last year. Yeah, and it was pretty cool for him. So I got that one. Uh, a place named a place called Bloom. It's Bloom. like yeah, like Asiai bowls and stuff like that. Yeah. So I, I got one there. And then, like, I got a few, like, little, like, uh, companies, like, on Instagram. So we're still working towards, like, getting more in Logan. Yeah. But it's kind of rough just because sometimes, like, people don't see the the point in doing it. Right. So, but we're, we're definitely trying to figure out a lot more in Logan. And we're talking to a lot of companies. So hopefully, you know, through the summer and then the start of the season, that'll pick up. And I'll get a, I'll get a couple more. But That's cool. Yep. If you could have your a sponsorship by anybody anywhere, like not just in Logan, uh-huh. who would it be? And then a local one, who would it be if you could? If I could have anywhere? Yeah. Probably like I love trucks, so like a Ford Raptor place. I don't know, wherever they sell a lot of Ford Raptors, so then I could just get a Ford Raptor. But so probably like I drive down in Orm. Yeah. They got a lot of Ford Raptors. Yeah, I've I've gone there plenty of times trying yeah. to. <laughs> you got you got a few nice cars too. Yeah, yourself, so we play with them a little bit. Mm-hmm. So probably I drive in Orm. Just get a nice truck from there. Even though I do got a nice truck already. What do you got right now? I got a Ford Ranger and an F one fifty. You got both of them. Uh-huh. Which one uh, do you like more? Probably my. Ooh, that's tough. The Ford Ranger's faster. Is it? Yeah. But what, what year are both of them? So my Ford Rangers are 2019, and then my F-150 is older. It's like a 2011, but looks like a 2020. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you've seen it. It's that red one that I used to drive. I haven't seen it, no. Cool. Well, yeah. But they're both they're both good trucks. I'm, I'm glad I got both of them. So you're a diehard Ford guy. Mm-hmm. That's another question. Yep. Yeah? The Ford all the way. For sure. I'm with you on that. Yeah. Sorry, I interrupted from the no, initial question good. I asked you, though. In you're Logan, good. who would you? In Logan... I don't know. Probably. That's a good question. I'm happy with Wilson. Yeah. Because I'm getting what I want. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, they're treating me right, and, like, I'm doing what they want me to do, and I'm getting, you know, what I want or what I need. So. For sure. That's really, yeah, probably just Wilson. That's sweet. Yeah. Uh, So, kind of back to the football side of things, what – are some things you're excited for from a team aspect this upcoming year? 
Uh, I'm excited the way that, you know, we work, like, our team works hard. Like, mm-hmm. just like uh, my freshman year when you were there, like, we, we work hard and, like, we all get along. We can all get along. Yeah. And, like, when things get rough, like, it just makes us want to, like, go even harder. So I'm excited to see, like, what we can do in a game environment, in a game situation when, you know, stuff gets hard and, like, see how we respond with that. So I'm excited to see how that goes. That's sweet. And there's been a lot of transition with coaches, players, a lot of stuff up yeah. there. It's like for you uh, making the decision to stay there, like mm-hmm. what ultimately led to that for you? Uh, Really just trusting the process. And like I talked to my mom and dad, like I had a deep conversation with them about like what I should do. And like it, it was tough because, you know, the coaching, like coaching changes are tough. Like I'm sure you know for that. Sure. So. I just felt I just felt the need to to stay and like just put on for my hometown and I ha- like like I said before like I have a lot of support there so it should it should be good and I'm ex- I'm I'm glad I decided to stay because I I definitely had an opportunity many opportunities to leave yeah so and I'm sure you'll continue to have opportunities yeah. to leave right it's uh-huh. like it's kind of hard for I think it kind of makes it tough for schools at like the Mountain West level yeah because. I mean, don't get me wrong. You go play well at the Mountain West, you're going to get a shot at the league, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But if you can go play well at the Mountain West at a young age like you, uh-huh. now you have opportunities to play at whatever, Pac-12, yeah, Big 12, exactly. SEC. Like, mm-hmm. it's hard to turn that down. Yeah. But like, also, I think you can't put a price tag on see, exactly. on playing and, exactly. like, being the man. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. And see, that's what, like, with this NIL stuff, like, it's good, but that's, like, a lot. what a lot of people chase, you know, because schools can now – or you can make money off your name and right. you know and your brand. So, like money's out there just waiting for, for sure. people. Yeah, and so it it. I don't know if I like it like that, just because like you see like the portal. Yeah, and that, like how how that changes and stuff. Like us, for instance, we lost thirty guys to the portal, which that's a lot of guys. And like I don't that's know, a ton of dudes. I don't know if they went to make money or if it's just the best decision for them. But like, money is a big a big thing in college football now. So. For sure, and I think uh, I think a lot of people, like you said, it's it's tough if you're chasing the money. Yeah, because a lot of times, I mean, someone can tell you they're going to give you X amount of money, but mm-hmm. you get there and this it it's not always what it seems. Yeah, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So uh, then you also have those schools that can't afford it, and they're like, <laughs> "I'll give you five hundred thousand if you come," and then they do. So then it's like, yeah, well, what do I do? Yeah, you know, no, it's definitely so. tough. Yeah. What are some things you do? Like, if you got big decisions, mm-hmm. obviously it seems like you talk to your parents. Yeah. Uh, what are some other things you go through, like, in your decision-making process? Um, I'm LDS, so I just pray about it. And, mm-hmm. like, pray until I, you know, feel some type of way or get an answer that, yeah. you know, that I know is right, really, so. That's cool. Yep. And uh, I ask a lot of the dudes who go on missions, their mission experiences here. You chose not to go on a mission. How do you feel like that helped you in football? This is always the question. Me and my wife right. talk about this all the time. Yeah. It's like you you have to make that decision. So yeah. how do you feel like that benefited you? I feel like that benefited me because, I mean, what happened these last this last year, like, wouldn't have happened if I was on a mission. But sometimes I can't look at it like that because I know if, like, I went on a mission, I could come back and be, like, ten times better, you know, getting blessings from the Lord. But yeah. You know, for me, it worked out. I'm glad I, I'm not, I don't want to say I'm glad I didn't go on a mission, but right. like it worked out for me that I didn't go. For so. sure. I think everybody has their path. And yeah. some people, like for me, I think I benefited physically from going on a mission uh-huh. in a sense, but also, I mean, it sets you back physically. Yeah. Like, yeah, I came back, I was much stronger, mm-hmm. uh, a lot, like my body was a lot healthier. Right. But also for the first year, I'd pull my hamstrings every time I ran. Like yeah. <laughs> it really yeah. set me out for three years. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. there's some give and take there. Mm-hmm. Um, what are some things you've done to be able to keep your faith without, cause obviously, I mean, a lot of people, I think they put a little bit too much weight on the mission thing. Yeah. So what are some things you do to keep your faith, uh, without going on a mission? Uh, I go to church every weekend or every week and yeah, that's really all like my family, like we don't like do like scripture study like Monday nights, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. We're not that extreme. Like it's good if you do, but yeah, just go into church every week, uh, me and my bishop also talk like once a week, just checking in, making sure like I'm good, and if he, if he needs anything, if, if he needs to do anything for me. So that's super cool. Just doing that stuff, I think that helps a lot. Do you think having a having a faith helps you in like how does it help you in just like your day to day life? 
I think it helps a lot because, like, whenever I'm, like, having a bad day, like, I'm just, like, faith is key. Like, that's that's the motto I go by because, like, it's a long story, but, like, my parents had COVID or whatever, and, like, I'd have to just tell myself, like, faith is key, like, the whole time. So I think I think that experience that I had to go through then, like, that really, like, helped me become, like, more spiritual, I guess. So, yeah, like, if I'm ever having a bad day, I just tell myself, like, faith is key. So That's cool. Mm-hmm. Your parents, they were going through it, weren't they? Yeah, it was, like, it was crazy. They, that was uh that was probably scary for you, huh? Yeah, it was it was tough. They were both yeah yeah it was, it was tough. They were both gone, uh, shoot, both pretty much dead. Honestly, like they were on ventilators. Yeah. So, it was it was a crazy time, but I'm glad like, you know, like I said, like I went to my motto and said faith is key, and like it worked out. So. That's super cool. Well, I mean, it's not cool, but we're, yeah, we're happy they right. <laughs> they yeah. made it out. Happy I they say made it cool. out for sure. Um. So, I don't know if you've seen this, but the question I ask everybody kind of towards the end is, what's something about you that most people would be surprised to know or, or that they don't know? <laughs> uh, let's see. I got to think about this one. Jet, what's something? <laughs> something about him that people would be surprised to know or they might not know about him. I'm a munch. Oh, yeah. Just playing. Don't put that in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Yeah. Oh, I got one. Okay. Okay, yeah. he's got one. I like like just like I'm a perfectionist. Like everything has to be like perfect in order for me to like do something. Like I gotta clean my room before I even go out. Like Yeah. Um, what's the word for it? Like there's a word for it. O C D? O C D, yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm super O C D and like I need it like done this way. And, like that's the only way it's gonna be done. So you're, are you like a clean? I'm a clean tight, freak. tidy yeah. person. Okay. Yeah, like if it's if something's not clean, like it's not gonna fly with me. Like <laughs> I'm the same way. So, I shower like legit three times a day. I can't go to sleep without showering. Yeah, like, I shower in the morning, shower at night, and then after the like a lift like midday. Yeah. So yeah, I shower three times a day too. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Uh, yeah, That's I say funny. I'm super OCD. That's funny. Mm-hmm. Well, dude, I appreciate you making the time to come. Mm-hmm. Uh, got a little night in Provo. Maybe go see a little of your ladies. I don't know how Ike Larson does it. You got a big oh, name yeah. and Logan. I don't know if the Provo ladies need a piece of Ike Larson, but they, they know me. But <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll see what happens tonight. No, so. well, good, dude. I appreciate it. And uh, you got your seven on seven deal tomorrow, so yep. good luck with that. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, it means a lot for you to, to take time to come down, and, and we're wishing you good luck in the season. Hopefully, you're able to achieve your goals and and uh, surpass all of it. Appreciate that. Thank you for having me on. Yes, sir. I had a good time. So. Sweet, you're the man. Yeah.